This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whomever breaks the least, one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace are yours this morning from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Scattered throughout the rooms of our home are various pieces of furniture made by my dad, including this piece. Dad made these pieces during a phase of woodworking that included the use of kits to create different furniture items. Some of you remember that, it's in the 70s. Of the things that he made, we have in our home a dresser, a side table, some shelves that hang on the wall, and this little table, this candle stand. And of course, it can hold things other than candles, and we use ours like a small side table next to a chair. But little stands like this were originally used to hold candles or lamps at times when candles and lamps were used more for illumination than decoration. My forebears were much more aware of the patterns of light and darkness than I am. I am married to an electrician. I have lights that have very simple switches, on, off. But I also have lights that are dimmable. And lights that operate on a remote control. I even have a light that's dimmable by using a remote control. Well, by and large, if I need light in a room, I walk in, I reach for whatever switch, and I turn the light on. And as a society, our ability to do more each day has grown as our ability to work after sunset has improved. Our forebears who didn't have electricity used stands like this for candles or for oil lamps so that the light could be moved wherever it was needed most in a room, wherever it most would shed the most light into that room. So here at Zion, we are quite firmly now in the season after the epiphany of our Lord that we celebrate every year early in January. This is a season of Sundays that focus on the revealing 
or the epiphany of Jesus Christ as the light of the world. Through the Bible readings that we use during this season, we hear a lot of light and darkness imagery. You are the light of the world, Jesus says in today's gospel reading from Matthew. His declaration comes as a part of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is on the side of a mountain. He's surrounded by crowds of people who are there to hear him teach. And he looks around and he calls the poor in spirit blessed and those who are mourning blessed and those who are meek blessed and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness blessed and those who show mercy blessed and those who are pure in heart, blessed. Those who act as peacemakers, blessed. And those who are persecuted and reviled for his sake, blessed. In other words, those whom Jesus blesses are not the ones who have their acts all together. These are not the ones who have lives that are free from pain or hardship. These are not ones who are strong or powerful, at least in the world's eyes. Rather, Jesus is blessing those who live real lives. And he sees their struggles, he sees their real lives, and Jesus blesses them in the midst of those real lives. And then into their lives, the light of the world, Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And he says this to people who quite literally live their lives very aware of the patterns of light and darkness. These are people who would have used daylight and fire and oil lamps for illumination. You are the light of the world, Jesus says to them. But he also says this to people who are dwelling in figurative shadows as well, those living under an oppressive Roman government. As occupiers, the Romans were not always so kind. The Pax Romana, the Roman peace, came at a very steep price. Those who spoke out against the power structure were harshly punished. The cross upon which Jesus died would join many other crosses that lined the sides of the roadways. And into these deep shadows, comes Jesus, who tells them, you are the light of the world. And he says this to us as well. In a world that dwells in shadows, you are the light of the world. In a world shadowed by sin, you are the light of the world. In a world shadowed by oppression and violence, you are the light of the world. In a world that is shadowed by racism and sexism and anti-Semitism and fear of the other, whoever the other may be, you are the light of the world. In a world shadowed by arguments and division, you are the light of the world. In this world that dwells in shadows, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. And then Jesus goes on to say, No one lights a lamp 
and then hides it. But they put it out for all to see. In the same way, let your light shine so that all may see your good deeds and give glory to God who is in heaven. God has given to us light and hope. And our true hope is found in the gospel of Jesus Christ that God so loved the world that Jesus came to live as one of us, to die on that cross, and to be raised to new life so that we might also have new life. That is our true hope. And my friends in Christ, God has placed this light within us so that we may proclaim the mighty acts of God who has called us out of the shadows and into the marvelous light. You are the light of the world. And not only for your own sakes, but for the sake of the world whom God loves. You are the light of the world. Amen.